darkest hour We stand tall, facing the storms We won't fall, with wisdom in our minds We find our way, just to see in our hearts We'll never sway Today, we're heading way back in time to explore the philosophy of Stoicism. But before you think, oh, another history lesson, Stoicism is seriously hot right now. Why is this ancient wisdom speaking to the modern world? What does being Stoic even mean? Yeah, it's not about being a stone-faced statue, that's for sure, though that is a common misconception. Right, so it's not about suppressing all emotions. No, stoicism is way more dynamic, much more practical. It's about building resilience, you know, that wisdom to handle life's ups and downs, finding your center, that inner strength amidst all the chaos. Okay, inner strength, resilience, finding your center. Yeah, I see the appeal. These aren't exactly new ideas either, are they? Some pretty impressive figures throughout history have looked to Stoicism. Absolutely. George Washington, for example. Oh, yeah. Leading a brand new nation. You don't do that without serious inner fortitude. Exactly. And he drew upon those Stoic principles centuries old, even then. Speaking of leaders, didn't Frederick the Great, the Prussian king, find inspiration in Stoicism, too? What is it about this philosophy and, like, positions of power? It's fascinating, right? For someone like Frederick the Great, I think it was the emphasis on self-control. Reason, duty, those timeless principles that resonate when you're facing tough choices, immense pressure. It's pretty amazing how these ideas cut across time and place. But before we go too far, let's rewind a bit. For someone totally new to this, what is Stoicism? At its core, Stoicism is a philosophy of life born in ancient Greece. It's about living in harmony with nature, using reason to guide your actions, and a big one, focusing on what you can control. Living in harmony with nature. Sounds a little... Well, abstract. How do you actually do that, especially now? You're right. It does sound a bit lofty, but that's where the practical side kicks in. It's not just lofty ideals. It's a framework for making choices, for facing challenges, for navigating, you know, the messiness of life. So how do you become a stoic? Mm -hmm. Grow a beard, wear a toga, just ponder life in the public square. Funny you should ask, the story of stoicism actually starts with a shipwreck. Around 304 BC, a merchant, Zeno of Sidium was shipwrecked, washed ashore in Athens, a moment of profound loss, you know, disorientation. Okay, picturing a, a very different kind of deep dive here. What does a shipwreck have to do with philosophy? Well, this wasn't just any shipwreck, it was a turning point. It led Zeno right to the heart of philosophy in Athens, where he developed Stoicism. What's really striking is Zeno's own view of it all. He said, I made a prosperous voyage when I suffered shipwreck. 
Wow. That sums up a key stoic principle finding opportunity in adversity. Shipwrecked to a school of thought. <laughs> Talk about lemons into lemonade. <laughs> Zeno wasn't the only big name in stoicism, though, right? Who else shaped this philosophy? When you think stoicism, three names. Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus. These weren't just names, they lived and breathed this philosophy, each facing their own unique challenges. Okay, so not just armchair philosophers, got it. These were real people with real problems. Let's start with Marcus Aurelius, Emperor of Rome. Philosopher king, that's gotta be a tough gig. What makes him so relevant to Stoicism? Well, Marcus Aurelius is fascinating because he really embodies that intersection of power and philosophy. Imagine, you know, the weight of an empire on your shoulders, constant threats, and yet, he found solace in Stoicism. His writings, meditations, they give us this incredible look into how he used those ancient principles, dealing with the very real pressures of leadership. Like a glimpse into the mind of an emperor. And speaking of navigating power, there's Seneca, playwright, advisor to Nero, talk about high stakes. What can we learn from his Stoic journey? Seneca's life, honestly, it's like a political thriller. Advisor De Niro facing those ethical dilemmas, court intrigue. It makes you think, how do you hold on to your principles, your sense of right and wrong, when you're in a world of such, well, moral complexity? A question for the ages. And then there's Epictetus, from enslaved person to influential teacher. His story really shows how transformative philosophy can be. What makes his teaching so compelling from a Stoic point of view? Epictetus's life, it reminds us that Stoicism isn't about your circumstances, it's about how you respond to them. He stressed focusing on what you can control your thoughts, actions, reactions, especially in the face of adversity. Given his own life, his teachings have this incredible depth, this resilience. He really embodied that, turning obstacles into opportunities for growth. Very inspiring. So we've got these figures, these Stoic exemplars, but what did they actually live by? What were the core principles, the virtues at the heart of it all? Stoicism, it really comes down to four cardinal virtues. Wisdom, justice, courage, and temperance. Think of them as the pillars of a good life, a life of purpose. Okay, so not your typical self-improvement buzzwords. Let's break it down. What do these virtues actually look like in action? Let's start with courage. I and mean, we're not just talking physical bravery here. Mm. Stoic courage. It's about facing your fears, challenging your comfort zones, standing up for what you believe in, even when it's tough. I'm sensing a theme here, this willingness to embrace challenges, not shy away. Exactly. Now, temperance, it might sound a bit old fashioned, but it's about finding balance, moderation in all things. It's about aligning your choices with your long term well being, not just, you know, instant gratification, the art of navigating pleasure and desire with awareness. Choices for long term well being over instant gratification, yeah, a lesson for all of us. How about justice? Seems straightforward, but I'm guessing there's more to it in Stoicism. You're right. Justice for the Stoics, it goes beyond just following the law. It's fairness, righteousness, honesty. It's acting on what you believe is right, even when nobody's watching, cultivating integrity in everything you do. Aligning actions with values, even when it's hard, no shortcuts. And finally, wisdom. What does it mean to embody wisdom from this Stoic perspective? Wisdom, in a way, it's like the culmination of all the other virtues. It's about cultivating a deep understanding of yourself and the world around you learning from your experiences, mistakes, from the wisdom of others. And for the Stoics, journaling played a key role in developing wisdom. Journaling. That's surprisingly relatable. How does yeah. that fit into the Stoic approach? Journaling for wisdom. Uh, it's not just keeping a diary though, right? Yeah. How do the Stoics actually use it to you know, put these principles into practice? Think of it as a daily habit, this self-reflection, self-improvement. They'd examine their thoughts, emotions, see where they weren't living up to their values and track their progress, you know, like a personal philosophical workout. I like that philosophical workout. So journaling was one tool. What other stoic exercises did they use to build that resilience, that wisdom? One of the most powerful even today is the dichotomy of control. It's about recognizing what you can control versus what you can't. Easy to get caught up in things outside our control, right? Weather, traffic, what others think. But the stoics say, focus your energy on what you can influence, mm -hmm. your thoughts, actions, reactions. Focus on what you can influence, not what you can't. Kind of like, don't sweat the small stuff. Exactly. Letting go of that need to control everything, that's where you find agency, peace of mind. Now, another interesting one is turning the obstacle upside down. Okay, that one's new to me. How does that work? 
Imagine a setback, some challenge pops up out of nowhere. Instead of just seeing the negative, the Stoics ask, what can I learn from this? Or how can I use this to grow stronger, wiser? It's reframing, seeing opportunity. Like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Precisely. They'd even do this negative visualization thing. Imagine setbacks in advance, not to dwell on them, but to be mentally, emotionally prepared. Like running mental fire drills, though they wouldn't be thrown off when stuff hit the fan. Exactly. <laughs> and speaking of preparing for life's challenges, there's... Memento mori. It's memento mori, I've heard the phrase, but always sounded a bit ominous, to be honest. It means remember you are mortal. And yeah, it can seem a bit morbid, but the Stoics weren't trying to be gloomy. They saw it as a reminder to, you know, truly live each day. Knowing our time is limited, it can be incredibly motivating, you know, clarifying. It makes you prioritize, savor the present moment, make each day count. Life's a gift. Don't take it for granted, right? Absolutely. And exploring this all today, I'm struck by how relevant it still is. In our world, often so chaotic, uncertain, stoicism gives us these tools for facing challenges with, you know, resilience, wisdom, even grace. It is pretty amazing how these old philosophies still resonate. Like it shows the human experience, our challenges, searching for meaning, it's all connected. It is. And that's the beauty of stoicism, isn't it? It's not a bunch of rules. It's a way of life, a life of purpose, intention, no matter who you are, what you feel. So as we wrap up this deep dive on stoicism, what will you take away from these ancient teachings? How can these principles, resilience, self-control, wisdom, how can they help you navigate your own journey? A good question to ponder. And on that note, I'll leave you with Marcus Aurelius. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Until next time, keep seeking wisdom, keep yeah. embracing that good life and keep diving deep.